Telltale, because unlike their games, real life has genuine consequences. Here's a little recap of all the seasons you should have played if you want to get the full context of the story and understand why Clementine is so beloved and why she's the only reason this series has made it this far. Still trying to lie to us at this point, huh? I can believe there are still working vehicles at this point in the apocalypse. Finding a working sports vehicle, though? <laughs> no. Everybody would have wrecked them by now, which is odd considering the game will show how Clementine got it and everything that'll happen in the next several minutes. Speaking of which, Clem has some remarkable driving skills. She's paying full attention to AJ and somehow doesn't crash. What you doing there, goofball? Pretending we got bullets. You would definitely not be playing with that gun if you actually had bullets. Hey there, Alvin Jr. It's me, Disco Broccoli. Word on the street is that you want to eat me. Is that true? Do you want to eat me? <sighs> She's too adorable. Nobody at this stage in the apocalypse would have a sign to ring a bell in front of their camp. Hey, walkers, we got some sticks and chops right up ahead. Come get your free and easy meal. Invisible walls. I see this game went to the Resident Evil 6 camera school, where you're so close over the shoulder, I wonder why you didn't just make it first person. Jesus, I made that joke years ago. How are you fools still falling for it? Hmm, interesting. Normally I would ignore actions like this, but there's only so much you can do to convince me Clem has a bottomless backpack. When these walkers were still people, they left a note telling others to just leave them be. Yet they have a key to a room that has plenty of food stored beneath it, meaning they still had enough food to hold them for a while. I understand that everybody deals with misery differently, but that just seems foolish. Security door. Hmm, can't pry that open. Yes, you can. You literally just pried open the front door that was also locked. Do we get the key? Mm, it's risky. Might be another way through that door. Game is making this situation unnecessarily complicated. Clem is battle-hardened at this point. It's not like she's never had to kill people who have turned. Can we stay here? Front doors busted open, no barriers to protect the surrounding area, and there's a bell up front to attract walkers. Come on, AJ. You were taught better than that. Not only am I sinning AJ being able to find a single bullet by itself, but also the fact that there's no gun around the train station to begin with. The walker couple took poison to kill themselves, which is a slightly more more painful way to go than a gunshot wound. We could eat for weeks with this much. It's rigged! I am so confused at this. Why was this rigged and why did the grenade take so long to roll out? Did the walker couple do this before they died? Yeah, we're gonna kill ourselves, but anybody trying to survive who comes across our food stash and attempts to take it is gonna die as well. Yeah, that's ridiculous enough to get counted as a sin. Um, AJ, a little help here. Quit forcing Clem to use the keys as a weapon. Car is able to start up even though the key is covered in walker blood. <laughs> Neither of them are seriously injured or killed by this. First person point of view at critical plot moments. Well, that's a great way to restrain somebody with easily removable tape. These pictures don't look remotely like the people they're supposed to represent. Ten has some terrible peripheral vision. What is this place? You can probably tell it used to be a school. Now it's whatever we want it to be. Marlin turns out to be a traitor who made a deal with a group of raiders named Delta, trading Ten's sister so that Delta would avoid conflict with Erickson's boarding school. However, the entire purpose of Delta kidnapping and smuggling youths is to train them to help out with a war they're fighting with another group of survivors, meaning Delta could have easily taken the entire boarding school and forced them to fight or die. Yet that won't be an issue till much later when the plot calls for it. Yo! Marlin! We got walkers on the fence! Yo, Willy! Scream even louder so that you can attract more walkers and any other undesirables! Lucio Ball is still a prominent sport even in the apocalypse. Clem's knife and hat turn out to be in her bag even though she lost both of them after the car crash. Um... Double, um... Does he know what that is? Is it really that hard to believe that kids are forced to grow up fast in a zombie apocalypse? Oh my darling! Oh my darling! Oh my darling Clementine, you are lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. You see this? Defenders of Gabe and worthless child that shall not be named from season one? That's how a youth character gains my support. Naturally, and with a winning personality. What do you think, AJ? I don't know. It's loud. It is. Loud is bad. Not always. Yes, it is. Always. Nice work, Clementine. Could use a little more finesse, though. Watch and learn. 
That is quite the waste of a trap for one walker. No kidding! Where'd all these walkers come from? They're called the Teleporting Dead, Brody. No Walking Dead season is complete without them. So, Rosie's now infected, right? You sure she's not one of those demon dogs from Ghostbusters? I mean, she even licks the damn walker blood. Speaking of Rosie, how was she able to survive this long? I would imagine the supply of pedigree is practically zero at this point. Game is gonna go through this AJ gets startled easily conflict once again in the same episode when we just had it with Ruby not too long ago. I didn't mean to hit him. I didn't know that it was Marvin. You sure, AJ? He clearly spoke before tapping you on the shoulder. Come on, y'all. Food's <laughs> What are you writing? What happened today? I chronicle everything. Hmm, like a diary? I try to think of it more like a history book. Those who do not learn from the past. If it's supposed to be a history book, why would you get upset when someone tries to read it? Hey, zip it! That is not yours to read, kid. Don't sweat it, buddy. You can make it up to me by teaching me your technique. It's an elbow to the nutsack. Not exactly the most complicated technique. <laughs> They actually have time for food etiquette in the apocalypse. That bowl is unbelievably clean. Where are AJ's parents? They just took a vacation to Mount Everest. They thought it was the perfect way to avoid the walkers. You two don't really look related, so... What happened there? That's a pretty odd thing to say, seeing as how Ten doesn't look anything like Minerva when we see her later on. In the morning, come find me. We talk about making this long term. Despite every group Clem has ever been with ending in disaster, the power of plot always seems to quell her emotions just so she could give it another try. What exactly happened to them? Sophie and Minerva. They went scavenging with Marlon and Brody out past the safe zone. Didn't make it back. It happens. Except you weren't there when it actually happened and didn't bother to question Marlin where and how they died. You know, the first thing anybody does when they supposedly lose loved ones off screen. Honestly, I just miss having someone around to talk to. There's just so many dudes. This place can get a little too bro town for my liking sometimes. I see that subtlety is still a foreign concept for modern day video game writers. What are you doing? This is where I'm gonna sleep. You will say in just a little bit that you're happy to not be sleeping in the car anymore after who knows how long. I'm glad we're not sleeping in the car anymore. Yet you refuse to sleep on a bed when presented with the opportunity. That one's a policeman. But what are they? They... These were the people who protected us. Ten, you are 12 years old. The apocalypse has been going on for the past eight to nine years by now. You were far too young to remember what a policeman was. That's the train station. There was a whole stash of food under the floorboards. Food that, astonishingly, is not completely destroyed from the blast radius of that grenade. What's out here? Oh, that's where we fish. Uh, got a shack for storage right here. Why do you have some of your supplies and weapons so far away from the school? We gotta do everything we can to prevent the inevitable. If it's inevitable, you cannot prevent it. One spear here, two more magically appear several seconds later. I think I can handle myself. I'm basically a ninja. Oh. You too? I thought I was the only one. Me too. Oh, so AJ knows about ninjas but not police or firemen. Hey! Check this guy out! He's like a walker pinata! Look, I like Lewis, but sometimes his carefree attitude makes me wonder how he hasn't been turned into dreadlock chops yet. It's a baby. Well, all meat is good meat. Is that so? Because I don't see any of you too eager to eat some walker steak. Well, all meat is good meat. It's not enough. Release it. Why'd it get bigger? Even though this is gonna somewhat contradict what I just said, you guys are living in the apocalypse. You do not have the luxury of skipping out on meals. Spread out. See if we can find them. Splitting from the group plot cliche. Someone robbed us? Fuck. That's... Fuck. Yes, Brody. Draw suspicion to yourself when you're already concerned about how Violet views you. Where else could we look? The train station. It's not too far from here. Maybe, but it's outside the safe zone. Didn't stop you from going there to rescue Clem that was also overrun with walkers. Those bags were not there when Clem and AJ first arrived here, meaning they should have either immediately raised suspicion or this is a sin of convenience. Abel has mastered the art of off-screen teleportation, seeing as how he appears in the train station without Lewis, Violet, or Clem noticing. The guy named Abel has Bible pages for hand-rolled cigarettes. I was half expecting to see his brother Kane with how heavy-handed the theme was. Miraculously, even if you attack Abel and push him into a group of walkers, he'll still end up surviving and without multiple bites. If I hadn't done what I did, he would have shot us. I made the right call. Bullshit! What if there are others? 
You don't know what people are capable of out there. There it is. Just like with the teleporting dead, no Walking Dead season is complete without the unreasonable overreacting asshole character. Which is even more eye-rolling considering Brody already knows about Abel, since she's aware of Marlin's deal with Delta. We can take Rosie out in the morning, see if she catches a scent. Why the hell weren't you already doing that every time you go hunting? Dying's not scary. Somebody forgot to put the Grim Reaper behind Ten to signify how doomed he is. I try not to focus on them being gone. I like picturing where they'd be now, instead. Ten, you are getting dangerously close to being the worthless, hopeless, optimistic character that has plagued this series for too long. And considering how this season can end, I have to count that as a sin. This locks from both sides. I don't think Clementine nor the writers understand how impractical it is to have a door that locks from both sides. Clem smashes this padlock and somehow it doesn't alert Marlin or Brody, especially since she was able to hear them arguing from her room. Most obvious heel turn ever. Nobody with that kind of hairstyle is going to end up being a good guy. Uh, what'd you say? What'd you say? If those raiders come back, Marlon said he'd let them take you. Character provides crucial information just before they die cliche. Marlon, you son of a bitch! Don't do this! I'm sorry. I can't let you. So I'm just gonna lock you in this basement that has another door leading inside the school. Damn it! Marlon! Anyone? AJ! Remarkable how AJ doesn't hear Clem screaming when he was able to hear Marlon and Brody arguing through the pipes. There's voices in the pipes. Somehow, the flashlight ends up all the way over here when that is not where it was dropped. Where is he? AJ, I understand your concern, but this isn't the best way to win over a place you're trying to stay at. Especially when you spent a good portion of this episode trying to gain Marlon's forgiveness for elbowing him in the nuts. Marlon was gonna give me and AJ up to Raiders in exchange for safety! The same way he gave up Sophie and Minnie! Do not misunderstand me here, people. If there is any video game character I would ever want to have plot armor, it is Clementine. That being said, Marlon Marlon had no trouble killing Brody for speaking the truth, yet he doesn't do so when Clem does the same thing. Marlon drops the gun in plain view of everyone, yet nobody will notice AJ pick up the gun so that he could shoot Marlon. I made you some coffee. Weird, seeing as how in order to make coffee, you need to grow coffee plants in a working greenhouse. A greenhouse that has long since been abandoned at this school. You got Marlon to give up. You saw how broken he was. What the fuck did you teach this kid? You know, I have to give credit where credit is due. For once in this damn series, the people opposing Clem actually have a valid complaint and aren't just exaggerating their anger and hypocrisy. It's kind of pitiful I'm taking off a sin for what should be the norm in video games. Violet said to come get you for the funeral. Yes, attend the funeral of the guy AJ murdered a day prior after most of the school raged at AJ and Clem. I'm sure there won't be any tension at all. AJ killed him like it was nothing. We all saw it, and no one stopped him. Exactly. You all had the perfect opportunity to prevent AJ from picking up the gun and shooting Marlin, yet none of you did anything to stop him. Kind of defeats the whole purpose of you being angry. What are you saying? I'm saying they gotta fucking go. They take a vote. Majority decides. They stay or they leave. You're not fooling me, game. I've been through this song and dance before, where the protagonist gets voted out of a group only for a situation to arise once they leave that leads them back to the group, which is exactly what happens here. It didn't work. Why'd you tell me to do that if it didn't work? Well, AJ, it's not like Clem can predict the future. Wait. Does AJ still have that gun? You mean the gun that no longer has any bullets in it since the only one was used on Marlin and thus no longer poses a threat? Cause I don't recall AJ getting any more ammo after the train station. Let's get going. The sun will set soon. How do you know? There's this cold that settles on my skin. Or you can just, you know, look up at the sky. Hide! Now come on out! I saw a couple of you on the road! So that's why I fired off my gun and alerted you to my position instead of you know, sneaking up on you for a surprise attack. I thought he'd die. You can survive a bite if you cut it off fast enough. Or if the plot demands it, since bites have quite the inconsistency in this series. And the fact that Abel didn't really have any tools on him to sever his arm. Sup, Lily? Somehow I knew you would return one day. So your surprising appearance is not so surprising to me. Now where are Mike, Bonnie, and Arvo? I still haven't gotten my revenge on those pricks. We'll take you back to the Delta to join our people. 
We have walls, we have working solar panels, and we grow our own food. Gee, now where have I heard that before? Oh yes, literally every community we have ever come across in this series. The St. John's Dairy, Crawford, Howe's Hardware, Wellington, Prescott, Richmond, McCarroll Ranch, all destroyed, infested, and abandoned. This is precisely why the Walking Dead formula has gotten stale. No matter where we go, it all eventually ends up the same. Oh. Took you too long enough to realize where the gunshot was coming from. I love how Abel fires multiple shots with that double barrel without needing to reload. Lily and Abel must have graduated from the Stormtrooper School of Aiming. Obligatory defend your position segment. I see that James has been taking tips from the Whisperers, though that has always made me question of how someone avoids getting ill from wearing the skins of walkers. I didn't mean to endanger you. The walkers were sent to help you. Delusional as James turns out to be, he's been doing this long enough to know that was never gonna work. James actually pulls an apple out of nowhere and offers it to AJ. He wants to guarantee AJ turns out to be an asshole. And the apple disappears after one bite, proving it existed solely to fulfill the cliche. The people who attacked you, what do you know about them? I know they steal kids. They took two last year. A common practice for them. They're at war up north. Their entire community against another. That's why they take people to make them fight, train them, use them. James talks about Delta as if he was once part of it, which he wasn't. Plus his camp and his barn are not far from Erickson's boarding school, meaning it's baffling how James has never come across members of the school and warned them about Delta's practices. Wait, throw it, distract him. Works just as well and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> This actually works, even though the walker was heading in their direction. This rainwater is not dousing the campfire. Is he awake? Yeah, he's so hot. Very poor choice of words there, Clem. Uh, James, you might want to take off your mask as you approach the school. Walker! Cause then that happens. Come on, let's get him inside. Lewis is quite eager to help AJ, despite voting him out of the school, even if it is for, um, uh, ulterior motives. I'm not trying to be weird. I just don't want everyone in the world to know where we are. The real sin is how you've been able to remain hidden for so long. This does not strike me as a place that can be concealed for very long. Violet, AJ is the least of their worries. I know, but everything is such a mess. They're scared and angry and they're looking for someone to blame. How about the Marlin guy who killed Brody, sold out Sophie and Minerva, put the entire school at risk, and is the entire reason the school had any conflict to begin with, who is now dead? Wait, why is everyone confused and angry again? Look at this place. It's a fortress. Clem, you were in a town in the previous season, and they had much better defenses than this. This school is hardly what you'd call a fortress. With a little work, we could make this place really hard to attack. Something the school should have done a long time ago, especially considering Willie and a sim are good at making traps. Well, you guys don't use the greenhouse anymore, do you? No, we used to. Then we lost someone out there. Walkers overran the place and Marlin wouldn't let us go back. Three walkers trapped inside of a greenhouse that is also behind a locked gate is hardly what I'd call overrun. Mitch, those people who shot Lewis, they're arming up to attack the school. We need Clem's help. Like hell we do. For all we know, she's one of them. There's the telltale formula I know so well. The Russian roulette of assholishness. This greenhouse was blocked from the inside even though everyone had turned. We weren't there when we dug the holes for Marlin and Brody. We had to use cups and bowls. Took forever. Somehow I doubt that, seeing as how Marlin and Brody got killed during nighttime, and by morning the following day, they were both buried. There's actually a crowbar in this greenhouse. Makes you wonder how anyone got trapped here. Miss Martin was a nurse who stayed behind and helped out the kids. However, that doesn't explain how she is severed in half and zip-tied when there are no other walkers in this science lab. And Ruby doesn't really provide a valid excuse. And somehow Miss Martin was able to block the door from the outside. This is the game telling you that ideas in development time were running out, and that you you are about to witness a whole lot of filler. Flashback within a dream cliche. If you go back to sleep, I'll stay awake and make sure no more bad dreams come. You can't do that. You're not magic. <laughs> How do you know? Maybe I have magic and never told you. That line is gonna end up being a lot more alarming considering how this season ends. Need my help? Yeah, actually. Could you check on everyone and make sure they're doing shit right? I mean, we've had two weeks to do that, but that's a little detail we can ignore. That is probably the least tactical position for this bench. It's angled towards the entrance, meaning it doesn't leave much room to hide. First time we get some actual gameplay since season one, and we have to deal with infinite arrows. Violet told us to work on the traps together, but a sim won't listen to anything I say! 
That doesn't mean you have to scream at each other. Lewis, I welcome you as a temporary member of Gaming Sins. Mary, fuck, kill. Bye. Fine. Mary, flip, kill. People are still getting demonetized years into the apocalypse. Believe me, the world before this one was pretty shitty. Civilization, readily available drinking water, food we could just shop for, health insurance, housing, transportation, free Wi-Fi, internet. <laughs> Yep, what a totally garbage world we lived in. You see, these are romances I actually approve of, because Violet or Lewis actually earn it, and it wasn't forced upon us unlike that little bastard who I refuse to name. No matter what happens, look out the You know, if your goal is to capture these kids to fight a war, probably not the best idea to basically immobilize them. Wait, Violet and Lewis had bows this entire time? Kill who you have to! Take the rest! Now there's the perfect motivation to get people to fight for your cause, murder their friends. Speaking of which, why wouldn't Lily bring Minerva along to convince the others if recruiting is her plan? Whenever I see someone like you, weak, small, afraid. Is this really the time to be villain monologuing when she's already bested you before? The fire inside the school gets extinguished without anyone attending to it. This should be strong enough to hold him. You mean the same duct tape you were able to easily escape from in the first episode? Got your gun back, huh? Uh-huh. Oh, the gun that AJ dropped in the woods when Abel attacked him? The woods that are probably still infested with walkers? And the gun that still has no bullets in it? That gun? Well, it only took four seasons, but we finally got our recycled Big B Wolf interrogation scene. Back at the Delta, we're at war! Yep, a war that we will never witness or be part of in any way. Thus, I have no vested interest. We need people to fight it. You little turds are supposed to be easy pickings. If you had trouble taking a school full of untrained youths, what hope do you have against people who are supposedly more dangerous than you. Well, Clem, you had a lighter this whole time. Why even bother finding the igniter from the science lab? There's no good cover leading up to the boat. We're gonna need one hell of a distraction. Walkers! Ask for the teleporting dead, you shall receive. It's Minnie. Hello there, former girlfriend. Nice to see you again. I thought you were dead. Hey, what are you doing with the bad guys who are kidnapping people and why should I forgive you? Sorry, I was saying the words Violet should be speaking in this scene. Your leadership is going to get my little brother killed. Yep, not the raiders who attacked the school in the first place killed Mitch and we're gonna kill Tin. That's just absurd thinking. Where's Sophie? Is she alive? She... She died protecting the Delta. So, Minnie is gonna criticize Clem for trying to protect people, and then just casually brings up her sister dying to protect Delta. Good to know that hypocrisy is still the one character trait Telltale knows how to write. <clears throat> Sorry, knew how to write. The cart that was carrying a Sim, Omar, and Lewis or Violet is abandoned not far from the school and amongst walkers, meaning none of them were able to escape throughout all the commotion and end up being captured anyway. You want to use walkers to hide? To sneak on board their ship? That's insane. Yeah, but not nearly as insane as you thinking walkers are still people inside that dead body of theirs. Clem, what's this? It's called a salt lake. Whatever you do, don't lick it. It tastes horrible. Wait a minute, how do you know? Did you lick it? I don't know. <laughs> she said the thing again! The mask will disguise your scent. How does a mask disguise the scent of your entire body? Well, this certainly ranks as one of the more bizarre and pointless sequences in The Walking Dead. It was supposed to prove walkers still had some humanity left in them, but all it did was prove that walkers are attracted to sound in a controlled environment, something we've already known about. What are you thinking about right now? You getting bit, turning into a monster. Not so subtle foreshadowing, to an extent. Have you ever danced with anyone before? Nope. Do you... wanna? I'm seeing a severe lack of Charleston's, Lindy Hop's, and the Thriller in this sequence. I see that we're going the Mass Effect 3 Citadel route where we plan a party just before plunging into certain doom. I didn't really need to be reminded of that. Surprise, dummies! Also known as the banner Telltale used against their employees. You guys wanna know why I got sent here? Wait, wait, please, no. Chronic masturbation. What does that mean? Uh-uh. Don't you dare. I actually find it more disturbing that Clem knows what it is, and somehow learned about it within the past eight to nine years. I'd sit there at her feet as we both watch TV. Mostly cartoons, and she never seemed to care. Sometimes I could hear her crying, but I didn't look back. I just feel really weird and turn up the volume. The music in the background suddenly changes when nobody was tampering with the gramophone. Never mind the blood red moon. The night will be... 
be over soon. Ladies and gentlemen, the Walking Dead version of the Reigns of Castamere, since this won't be the only time it is sung right before a bloodbath. Surprisingly, Cameo is not so surprising. It's the final season. I knew he had to make at least one more appearance at some point. Why the train? You always pick the train. You sure about that dream sequence, Lee? Because I recall Clem dreaming about the RV at the end of season two. Some bad people captured my friends, and getting them back might get the rest of us killed. Absolutely baffled that even in this imaginary conversation with Lee, Clem doesn't mention the person responsible for this ordeal is Lily. Wasting ammo is a proficient skill for Delta. The walker Clem drags was just outside the range of the searchlight from the boat, yet no one spotted her or the rest of the group. The walkers, they'll be here in a little while. You can join them as they pass through the trees. The noise from the boat will draw them toward the water. Except the boat isn't even running the engine when we do approach. And even if it was, the noise wouldn't be loud enough to draw the walkers to it. This plan actually works when there aren't really that many walkers. And at no point, even with a spotlight, does anybody notice Clem and company hiding behind the walkers. Boatmaster Supreme Kenny would be proud. Speaking of being a boatmaster, you want to know how Delta could have avoided walkers getting near them any further? Move their mobile boat away from the dock. It's amazing the wonders you can accomplish when you invest all your points into plot convenience. Get out. I could just release your friends and let bygones be bygones since you're clearly here to rescue them in all this chaos. But we still have another episode left and the game needs an antagonist. Speaking of which, let's recap Lily's plan here. Hey kids, you got two options. You can either stay and die in this boarding school that you've been living relatively comfortably in since the beginning of the apocalypse and that you've been able to survive in, or I'll forcibly capture you and train you to fight a war for us where you will most likely die anyway. I can see how many and anyone else would be so eager to join. AJ. Do you still have your knife? Yeah, they didn't find it. Only the big one. It's always great to know that villain incompetence is the only reason why some escapes are possible. Lily will not hear that. If you saved Lewis instead of Violet, then Violet will assume the role of Eleanor from the previous season, where she'll completely turn against you and side with Minnie, even after Minnie had abandoned her and admits to killing her own sister, and after you had clearly tried to rescue her with this siege. This type of writing is one of the many reasons why Telltale collapsed. You think you can kill me? I know I can! Dang. Now that is some not so subtle foreshadowing. These people have genome soldier vision. It's remarkable how they didn't shoot James when he was still wearing his mask. Speaking of which, James manages to get captured, even though he said, I'll lead you through the herd until you reach the boat. That's as far as I go. After that, it's up to you. The thing about people like him, AJ, is that they're too broken to fit into a community. They won't fight for anyone but themselves. How would you know? This is the first time you're meeting James and he just helped a group of people siege your boat to rescue their friends. That doesn't sound like someone who would just fight for themselves. While this might have turned out to be a compelling conflict under different circumstances, this ultimately turns out to be pointless. We're in the apocalypse. Survival is of the utmost importance. AJ has already killed before and it was against someone who had killed a friend and tried to lie. If anything, I've been teaching him to protect loved ones and eliminate those who try to take them away. Something any sane person would be doing in this scenario. Literally anybody who has survived at this point is going to have something broken inside of them. I can think of way worse things than a child taking pleasure of killing those who would harm their loved ones. Lily, we couldn't find the other. What did you do? Did you not hear the multiple gunshots that were just fired? You know what? I just noticed I haven't sinned this game for any quick time events. Well, I'm doing it now since they got pulled out the ass for this sequence. This random guy somehow survived all the explosions while inside. I think he did that just so Clem could get Marlin's bow back. The bow then disappears and reappears throughout this scene. Yeah, I think I can count that as a saving the hero in the nick of time cliche. Hey, the place is surrounded by walkers, but somehow the horses are still here and haven't been eaten yet. Clementine! Minerva, you are quite astonishing, being able to scream perfectly even with part of your face chewed out. James somehow found the time to locate his mask, escape, and get ahead of everyone. Is that a fake narrow crevice loading screen I'm seeing? Damn it. It's so dark in here. Yeah, it's so dark that the lighting hasn't even changed. Despite the cave being deep and dark and James wearing his mask to hide his scent, the walkers still make their way through. You brought this on yourself. We're still trying to escape from walkers, but we really don't have much conflict in this episode, so I need to play the role of unreasonable asshole. I liked it. Now there's a heel turn that will never realize its full potential. You've earned my trust. If you say you won't ever enjoy killing, I believe you. I won't. I promise. That was easy. A little late to be mentioning that, don't you think? The day after AJ killed Marlon, 
You already know violin and I voted for you to stay. A sim was the third vote. Yes, Tin. Bring up all this irrelevant voting just to rile up AJ and make him feel unwanted. We're safe, Clem. All we gotta do now is find our way home. I see that Violet was eager to plant the death flags around her circle. These are some of the worst choices to renaming the school. Minnie channels her inner slasher villain. She's literally become an indestructible video game boss. The night will be over soon. Not only is Minerva still able to sing perfectly, but that sound was a little too echoey as well. The gun doesn't have any ammo when Minnie fires at Clem, yet it does when Clem wrestles it away from Minnie. Oh, now the walkers decide to eat Minnie when the blood hasn't even washed off. Get across! Yeah, there's the issue of Clem's gaping wound on her leg, though. <laughs> Well, damn, if it was that easy, you could have just shot Minnie as soon as she arrived and made the jump earlier. Suddenly, I'm getting season one flashbacks and slowly feeling my soul being crushed. Got some teleporting dead for one last time. This is getting dangerously close to the it ends where it all began cliche. Hey guys, we ran out of the plot. How do we extend this episode? Eh, just toss in a flashback sequence. We got ourselves a Red Dead Redemption epilogue where we get to play as the secondary protagonist groomed for the future. Introducing the brand new dialogue system 20 minutes before the ending. A blizzard in hell is more believable than Clem's hat finding its way back somehow. While I am extremely happy that the game prevented me from slipping into a coma due to heartbreak, Clem's survival is questionable to say the least. She was bit and falling ill really quick and was pretty much done for. After AJ chopped off her leg, he would have had to cauterize the wound, cover her in walker guts, kill all the walkers surrounding the barn, then carry her with something like a wheelbarrow all the way back to the school. All by himself and in a short enough amount of time. And if that's actually the excuse, I might I just get a headache from face palming so hard. I found your hat. It was in the creek down by the shack. You know what? You keep it if you want it. You know, I've gotten many sins out of this series over the years, but that just might be the biggest one. That hat is like the holy grail, the one ring, the creme de la creme, the pinnacle of plot armor. AJ is an important character and all, but this game can piss off with passing the torch. This is supposed to be the final season. Leave it where it belongs, with Clem. Yep, I'm sure that'll be relevant in this final season. AJ perfectly demonstrates exactly what I'm doing to this series. Thank you for playing, huh? You're welcome. Though the term playing is a bit of an exaggeration. I don't like goofball. Would you prefer shitbird? Fuck. Watch the swears. Well, you said shitbird before. As I say, not as I do. <laughs> Drop the knife. Now. Save your sorries for someone who cares. Hey, you want to lose some more teeth? Keep staring. Watch your kid for you. He's not my kid, and I'm not his mom. Does he know what that is? My gun, so it's my rules. Does he know what that is? I'll guarantee he's a better shot than you. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Stop. Now. Can you play something else? Come on, y'all. Oh, come on, tough guy. Shake it off. Hey, zip it. That is not yours to read, kid. Finish that sentence, AJ. Get ready, losers. Because it's time for you all to lose. Clem. You can't have been alone this entire time. Who used to take care of you? I've always taken care of myself. Out of the four of us, who do you think is going to die first? Any one of you, but certainly not me. Where are AJ's parents? How well you need to know. Ever have a boyfriend? That stuff is for suckers. Come on, Blue. You're loud, dramatic, a little annoying. You're basically a walking distraction. I think she pretty much sums it up. Do not fuck with me. AJ, shoot! You're our savior, Clem. <laughs> yeah, tell me something I don't know. Wanna try stepping back, Brody? I'd recommend it. Is it okay if I stay in the picture? Sorry, AJ, but no. Scratch him out. Now. You are fucking failing! Brody's dead! Sophie and Minerva are gone! You suck at protection! Why would you do something like that? Easy. Because he's a coward. You're pathetic. Fuck you, Lewis! He's a little kid! So shut your fucking mouth! The last person who pointed a weapon at me is dead. Unless you want to join him, you'll back the fuck off. AJ killed him like it was nothing. 
After what he did to Brody, Marlon deserved exactly what he got. That's not what you said before. I can't believe this. You're all fucking crazy. We'll wait for you to pack up, then Lewis and I'll escort you out past the safe zone. Don't bother. We don't want your help. It's not so bad. Don't pretend you give a shit. I wish you could stay. You don't seem all that torn up about it, considering you walked us all the way out here. I tried, okay? I did everything I could to help you guys. Well, it wasn't much. Fuck you, you... We don't want to be out here all day. I'm not helping you shitheads. My name is Lily. I don't give a fuck who you are, you evil bitch! The people who attacked you. What do you know about them? I know I'll kill the next one I see. Wait. Throw it. Distract him. Works just as well, and nobody gets hurt. I know you think I didn't do enough for you and AJ, but when I saw you were in danger, I had to do something. AJ and I are lucky to be alive! You're a fucking asshole, you know that? You all are. We send the one we don't mind losing. You know what? Fuck you. I can barely recognize her. She's not your friend. She's just fertilizer. Helping the plants grow. No! Oh. Ms. Martin's the reason we're all alive. And? She deserves a proper burial. Here. We should burn her. I'm not mad at him anymore. Are you? Yeah, I'm mad at him. I'm fucking pissed. Great, we're totally fucking fucked. That did nothing, because that's not at all part of how you tune a piano. <laughs> but it was funny! <laughs> You're the worst, ever. Okay, it was a little funny? Not even a little? Damn. I'll see you in hell. Rise and shine, <laughs> asshole! Don't mind if I do. He gets nothing. I don't give a shit about your war, or your fucking Delta. You aren't gonna do that. You don't have it in you. Call it off! Call it off, you fucking psycho! Oops. He's gonna die, isn't he? And I hope he suffers every moment till he does. Just promise me. You won't let me turn. How about this? How about you tell me everything you know, and then we'll see. What if they can feel it when they turn? I really don't care. This isn't about your pain. We want answers. You're Clementine. The girl who took over after Marlin died. Do you have a problem with that? <gasps> Seriously? Fuck you. Last time your people attacked us, you lost two men. You'll lose more if you come back. Okay, if that's how you want it. When I turn into a monster, I will bite you. Alvin Jr., if you have a gun, you shoot me. If you don't, you use your knife. No knife, a rock to the head, as many times as you have to. I said I don't wanna. I don't care what you said, you will do it. I don't care what you say. God damn it, AJ. AJ, I'm done. We're not doing this anymore. You're gonna drop it, or you're in big trouble. I mean it. <laughs> you're terrible. I was thinking maybe we should name it. It's a bomb, not a baby. We're not naming it. I need you to slap me. Help pull me out of this. Some fucking friend you are. I'm so sorry, Violet. I didn't have a clear shot. Where's Abel? He got hurt bad in a fight. We let him turn. He wanted to die quick, but we didn't let him. That was my call. I made sure he turned. Well, I guess asshole runs in the family. Is that the consequence? That you're an asshole? Which twin are you going to be? The loyal one? Or the dead one? I'll be the one who breaks out at night and cuts your throat while you sleep. Do it, AJ! If I see you again, I'll kill you. You're pathetic, Lily. Clem, did you... did you see Minnie out there? I'm sorry, I didn't see her. Take this guilt trip of yours and shove it up your ass! To making it past tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Alright, fine. Maybe we live another day to making it past tomorrow.